want to share today on uh, the hour God, uh, the hour Jesus wants us most. <clears throat> and some of us know a little bit in this area, but it's something that I've actually searched on many years ago and then even recently have done some searching. Um, so let's turn to Romans chapter 13 and verse 13. <clears throat> Romans 13, 13, and we'll also look at verse 14. And Romans 13, verse 13 says, Let us walk honestly, and here's the phrase, as in the day. Let us walk honestly as in the day. And uh, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. Verse 14, but... Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust there, thereof. So there is, a, there is a day that he's talking about, but he's saying the day, and he's talking about walking in this day. When you walk into a day, you start when the sun starts coming up and you start walking into the hours that are in that day. <clears throat> and so let's look in John 11, verse 9 and 10, and I will be sharing a lot of scriptures with you. Um, but John uh, 9, 10, Jesus explains. He gives a little more explanation of, of what he meant and what's being talked about uh, in relationship to the day. John eleven nine 9 says, Jesus answered, Are there not 12 hours in the day? Are there not 12 hours in the day? And so he is specifically saying, If you're going to walk in the day, you're going to walk in these 12 hours as you move forward in the day. If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. And so <clears throat> you have that same sort of feel in both of these scriptures, that when you walk in the day, then um, uh, you, uh, you are uh, with the Lord, and the Lord is, you're putting on the Lord as you go. If not, then there's other things that are going on that are your life. And, um, but he's, when he says, there, are there not 12 hours in a day, he's saying that there is a, there's a progression that takes place, and we need to know that progression. And um, I feel like that for us, that progression, that there is that progression, and that progression relates to our experience, our experience in the Lord, our experience as we walk with the Lord. But I have listed them <coughs> in... Um, an order of Jesus's life on the earth, but for us it doesn't take, it's not that sort of a situation, it's more what's being formed in us as, it's almost like from birth through. So let me list the 12 hours. Number one is the, the first hour is the hour of birth, the next one the hour of baptism and the, and the spirit. Number three, the hour of temptation Number four, the hour of the word. Number five, the hour of blessings. Number six, the hour of sending disciples. Number seven, the hour of ministry. Number eight, the hour of exaltation. Uh, uh, number nine, the hour of final words and prayers. Number 10, the hour of betrayal. Number 11, the hour of agony. And number 12, the hour of crucifixion. <clears throat> and so... Um, and so let me just give you an uh, example of one of those. And this is, uh, and you don't have to turn to all of these scriptures because I'll read them, but because I'll throw a lot of scripture at you. But this is Luke 7, 21. And it says, And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits, and unto many they were blind he gave sight. So there are these different hours where, where Jesus is doing specific things for specific period of time and um, so what I want to do is give now a scripture which um, <clears throat> most of you know this th this area right here in relationship to a poem I wrote called the importance of prayer and it's a similar thing but it but what I want to do is go through these scriptures and I want to show you the transition from the 11th hour to the 12th hour okay because there is a transition that takes place in these scriptures, and it'll literally show it to you. And then from there, I want to take us a little deeper into, into this thought. This is in Matthew chapter 26, 
Matthew 26 and verse 38 through 46, okay? <clears throat> then saith he unto them, my soul, so this is Jesus, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. This is before the death of the cross. We don't think of, of Jesus being to the point of death even before the cross, but this is where he is at. <clears throat> Tarry ye here and watch with me. Important words because they're going to come up in the greater theme uh, uh, later in, as I get into this. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And verse 40, But he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What could ye not watch with me one hour? Okay, so this is one of the hours in which uh, we've listed off. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if this, cu uh, if this cup may not pass away from me, um, <clears throat> except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now, sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. There was a transition from the 11th hour to the 12th hour, and they missed it. They missed it. Um, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise and let us be going. Behold, he is, uh, he is at hand that doth betray me. <clears throat> All right. So just to give you some quick scriptures, and I'm, I'm going a little fast here because I've, I've got a lot of scriptures that I want to share. Because when you see it in the Word of God, then you know it helps you to be able to search it out later also. <clears throat> So what I'm going to do is, and again, I'm going to give you four sets of scriptures. They're all saying the same thing, so you don't have to take the time to look them up. Just, just listen, because it's going to express the same uh, point. This is 1 John 2, 4. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. This is very early in the hours of the day that you, you're walking through. This is very early. And Jesus is talking to his mother and saying, this isn't my hour. <clears throat> okay. So he's calling one particular hour his hour. Uh, John 7, 30. Then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him because his hour was not yet come. His hour again, and it hadn't yet come. No matter what you're going through, no matter what stage you're at in these days, or these hours of the day, um, there's, a, there's an hour that, that you come to that is his hour. <clears throat> John 8, 20. And these, these are not all the scriptures that say this. I just picked up the first four so I could have uh, plenty of, of confirmation. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. <clears throat> it's amazing, really. I'm, I can't, I'm not going to go through the, these verses and explain every part, but there is different nuances of his hour and his view of it and his relationship to what's going on around him. And then John 12, 23 and 24, uh, and Jesus answered them saying, the hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. So Jesus finally, after all of the events in the different hours, and all of the things that came, he had one hour that he kept referring to. And one hour that he, in his heart, was moving toward. This is where he wanted to be. As we said, the twelfth hour was the hour of his crucifixion. <clears throat> so, uh, now I want to go to Matthew 20. And this will be the, the final scriptures. But I'm going to be covering a bunch of... Uh, of Matthew 20. <clears throat> so you can turn there with me. And here we're going to see that progression. We're literally going to see the progression. Um, and, and we're also going to see the, the point in which we 
we want to or he wants us to enter into with him. Um, and all of these things are noted by hours. And by the way, you can go through and do a study on the hour and you'll find that this, this is really amazing study. Matthew 20, verse 1 through 5. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that... So it's talking about the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is, is going to lay out walking in the kingdom. <clears throat> For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder which went out early in the morning. <clears throat> We're talking about the first hour. Uh, to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them uh, into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. Okay, so he's moving forward and the hour is moving forward and how he's relating and who he's bringing into uh, in, in these different hours at the time. <coughs> um, uh, verse 4, and saith, un, saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. And again he went out about the sixth hour <clears throat> and ninth hour and did likewise. All right, so the next portion of the scripture, we're going to get into the eleventh hour, when the eleventh hour and the twelfth hour. Okay, so... You know, all, they, all these have joined with Jesus at different times, from the first to the third to the, he's going all through this progression, and people are joining him at a certain part of the walk in this progression. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, verse 8 through 12. Um, <coughs> so when even, even or evening was come, uh, meaning... This is the twelfth hour, when the twelfth hour has come, okay? The Lord of the vineyard, so, and the proof of that is that um, <clears throat> verse 7 said about the eleventh hour, he went and found some others. And then this is the next uh, several verses, next two verses down, and he says, and when evening was come. So this is the twelfth hour. <clears throat> or, uh, well... So let's, let's look at it. So when evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call the laborers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received the... So these are the guys that came in on the last hour to be with him through the twelfth hour. <clears throat> um, they, they received every man a penny. And when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. Oh, man... What, how, how our minds are messed up because we, we, we look at it according to what we've earned instead of according to his heart and what he's doing. Um, <clears throat> so verse 10 again, but when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man, the good man, the good man of the house saying, these last have wrought but one hour, the twelfth hour. These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us. I got chills, but it's probably because the air conditioner's wrong. <laughs> Which have borne the burden of the heat of the day. <clears throat> so, um, Remember, according to Jesus, the day, the last hour, the twelfth hour, that's when the day is done. That's the end of the progression. And um, according to the first, the ones he, he called first, we're the first. We're more deserving because we're the first. This is unfair that we, you, you know, we get a penny and they get a penny. You know, we went the first hour and the second hour and the third hour and all this. <clears throat> so... They end up blaming the goodman, which represents Christ, which or, or the Father, however you want to look at it, <clears throat> and um, and they're 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 saying that this is unfair. They're they're looking at it in that way, but in truth, it was fair because he told them originally, "I will give you one penny. I'll give you this amount," and that's what they agreed with, that amount. Okay, so. Um, so I wrote down, um, but uh, the but the good they're wanting, 
the good, not what's fair. Because the ones who are last actually got what was really from the heart of the, of the goodman. They got the same amount when they should have, if you, if you want to look at it like that, should have gotten less. However, the father doesn't look at it like that. The son doesn't look at it like that. He looks at it like, you were with me in the twelfth hour. Remember what we read about the Garden of Gethsemane. Um, so I said of those who are first, because I'm first, so it's important for me. They're only thinking of themselves. Even though they're walking through the progression with the Lord, through the hours, they have not yet come to the cross. They have not come to the twelfth hour. Not in their heart, you see. And so they're still holding on to their flesh. <clears throat> so I wrote, they will accept his goodness if it's for them. In other words, this is unfair if they get this. <laughs> but it's... You know, I mean, if I, this is unfair if they get this and we don't, but it would be okay if we got it and they did. See, that's just total flesh, man. Somebody has missed the 12th hour. Um, so, so to the first, he gives what they earned. He gave them exactly what they agreed upon. To the last, he gives graciously. Because you were with me in the, forget the exact wording of Jesus when he was going through the, the 12th hour. <clears throat> All right, verse 13 through 16, because we're not done yet. <clears throat> but he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst thou not agree with me for a penny? Take that which is thine and go thy way. See that? Take what's yours and go your way. <clears throat> I just want to be at the Lord. I don't want to go my way. Here, take it back. I you know, if that's going to be the issue, Lord, let me have nothing but you. <clears throat> Take that which is thine and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Even though they weren't there all those hours that clicked by, all of that time, they were with me in the last hour. And they were with me. Uh, is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is mine eye evil because I am good? Or is thine eye evil because he's saying, is, or, you know, is my goodness causing you to be evil? No. You're, you never entered into the twelfth hour in the spirit in which it was given. All right, so come on. The disciples were there. All twelve of them were there on that hour. And they were not with the Lord at that time. They weren't. And we read it. <clears throat> All right. So, um, verse 16, So the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. For many be called, and few be chosen. Oh, my goodness. Wow. 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 I mean, I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it here. <clears throat> many are called, but few are chosen. These first were called. All of these people were called. But apparently in Jesus' heart, at the last hour, he went out on the 11th hour and chose the ones that would be with him. That's what he's saying here. Many are called, but few are chosen. He's already been, I call you, I call you, I call But the 12th hour, I'm going to call somebody that's going to be with me in, in the cross, in the death, in the in the spirit of the Lamb, in, in my spirit. This is what the Lord, I, I choose you because you, and I choose you when, at what hour? In the 11th hour at the end of it so that you'll be with me in the 12th hour. Don't be talking bad about these guys. You're the ones who are wrong. You know, if you say you're, you know, your eye is evil because I'm good. <clears throat> so, verse, still a little more here, the next verse, 17 through 19, and we're almost ready to wrap up. And Jesus going, no, so this is no longer a parable. This is no longer a parable. This is now the story, the real story. And here, here we go, Jesus is going. And Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the 12 disciples apart in the way and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem. They heard this parable. This is before um, Gethsemane. 
And Jesus, <clears throat> and Jesus said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priest and to the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him, and the third day he shall rise again. So this is Jesus telling a story of what's going to happen, of what's, what's, the, what's the issue of his heart, where is his heart. It's not just calling people to serve him in the, in the uh, ministry here or, or in the word here or uh, in this hour and everything else. He's, and the whole time he told them, there's my hour, the hour that's mine, that someone can be with me because it's mine. Um, it hadn't come yet. But, uh, and, and so he's ter- telling this parable just before he goes up. And he's saying to them, you know, I'm going to be betrayed. And, and it's gonna, all this is going to happen. The twelfth hour is here. And so he's saying, for us, not just them now. He's saying for us, I am going to choose the ones, not just call, many are called, I'm going to choose the ones who are going to be with me in the twelfth hour. I'm going to choose the one who will be with me in my hour. I'm going to choose the ones who will let my spirit be in them and lay down their lives and be given and be, and, and be sown in the last hour, in the hardest hour, because the, the, the first, the first said, well, we were with you in the heat of the day. <laughs> Jesus is going, you don't know. The last hour is going to be way hotter than anything you experience in the day, in, in the middle hours of the day. The last hour is going to be much harder, but there will be those that are chosen because I know they want me. They want to be with me. They're, they don't want the earth. They don't want everything to go their way. They don't want to feel happy because God is doing everything for them in the natural. They'll take loss. They'll take weakness. They'll take uh, um, being looked down on if that's, that's what it comes to so that they can be with me. That's what Jesus would say. That's his heart. And he stands up. He stands up for the last. He stands up for the last. And he rebukes the first because his heart is with the, lo- the least. His heart is with the last. His heart is with the downtrodden. His heart is with the, uh, the, 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 the lame and the blind and the halt. Not just sickness, but those who willingly enter into that and be with him in that spirit. So let's pray. Father, I just thank you for this time together. And I thank you that your spirit is here. And I thank you that you want to say things to us that I can't say in my sharing and that, that uh, so Lord, I ask you to bless the, the life and the word of this, not my life, not my word, but the life and the word of this, Father, of your son, and they, that if from it we can glean the treasures of his heart and we can, we can move toward him. And Father, we can, we can when, he, when he comes to us at the very last day, and, says, I want you guys with me in the twelfth hour who will go with him and will be with him and will bear with him and will love him in the beauty of his nature and will love him enough to let that nature fill us and flow through us and, and thrill his heart that there are those who are after his image and after his kind. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, guys. Love you. Thank you.